we will be looking at what is called the average rate of change. What does that mean? It really means just the slope of a line, but we're going to apply that to different nonlinear functions. Well, the slope, you may remember, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. A fancier way of writing that is in this format delta y, that little triangle is delta, that means the change in y over the change in x. So f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Again, it's just the slope. So find the average rate of change from negative 1 to positive 1 using that function. Well, if b is negative 1, again I'm looking at this formula, then what is f of b, or f evaluated at negative 1? Well, we'd have negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. That's 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. Then I have a is equal to 1, so I need to find f of a. So f of 1 is 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 3. 1 minus 2 plus 3, I believe that is 2. So if I wanted to find the average rate of change from part A, so part A, according to the formula, f of negative 1 minus f of positive 1 divided by b minus a. So f of negative 1 is 6 minus 2 over negative 2, so what is that? 4 divided by negative 2, which is positive 2. Now let's just connect those two points. So if I have, when x is negative 1, we have 6. See, I could have just done it from the graph. And f of positive 1 is 2. If I were to connect those dots with a line, their slope would be negative 2, not positive 2. Missed my minus sign. Look at the graph. That definitely has a negative slope. So could we do part B from just the graph? Well, let's see. F of 2, okay, when x is 2, what's y? 3. So F of 2 minus F of 5. Let's see. 2, 3, 4. Ah, I don't have 5 on the graph. So I would have to evaluate that. So I know it would be 3 minus something divided by 2 minus 5. And I'm going to let you get that answer. And would it be positive or negative? If I had a slope of a point here and somewhere probably up there, not too sure where, would that line have a positive slope or a negative slope? Now that we have found the slope of a line, and a secant line just means it touches a function in two points, as opposed to a tangent line, which would just touch it at one point. So find an equation of the secant line containing these two points. Remember, this is x, this is y. We also have to know an equation of a line formula. So we have y minus y1 equals your slope times x minus x1. I could also use the formula perhaps y equals mx plus b as long as I know b is the y-intercept of the line. So let's see if I have x is 0, what is y? Looks like 3. So I have 0 comma 3. And when x is positive 3, what is y? looks like it's 6. So I want the equation for that line. Can I use that formula, y equals mx plus b? Do I have the y-intercept of that line? Yes, I do. It is 3. Do I have the slope of that line? Well, we could look at this and say, remember the change in y, delta y over delta x. So we would have 6, that's the y value, minus 3, 
over the x values 3 minus 0. So I have a slope of 1 and that looks right according to the graph. Remember 1 over 1, rise over run, that kind of thing. So I have y equals 1 times x and what is b? 3. So I have y equals x plus 3. That's finding an equation of a secant line. Just writing it kind of different perhaps from how you saw it in a previous math class. Why would we want to look at the slope of a secant line? Well in general it is the difference quotient. So we can write that slope of the line in terms of x and delta x. I know that looks weird but you're going to see this in calculus. Remember delta x is the change in the x values. So this denominator is still x2 minus x1. It's just written in a different way. So we're going to go through and for this given function, which is a parabola, and we're going to find the following. We're going to find the slope of the secant line in terms of x and delta x and simplify our answer, meaning we're going to use this formula with this function. So we have the slope of the secant line equals f of x plus delta x. That means everywhere there is an x, I'm going to put x plus delta x. So I have negative x plus delta x squared plus 3 times x plus delta x minus 2. Then we keep going. We have to subtract f of x, which is our given function. Subtract f of x. And we're going to divide all of that by delta x and we're going to simplify. So I'll go a step at a time. So I'm going to foil this out. I'm going to keep my negative sign out in front. distribute the 3 and then this is what most students miss is distributing that minus sign there. Again all divided by delta x. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this minus sign so I have negative x squared minus 2x delta x and yes I had left that out previously plus delta x squared and look made another mistake that should be minus I'm distributing all divided by delta x and at this point hopefully some things are going to cancel I have a negative x squared and a positive x squared the three x's go away and the twos go away so what do I have left? Negative 2x delta x minus delta x squared plus 3 delta x all divided by delta x. Now since all of these have a delta x I can reduce out a delta x and be left with negative 2x minus delta x plus 3. That's the slope of the secant line for that function. That means Yes, I have a parabola and I had this point and this point and I joined them. I could find the slope of that secant line as long as I knew x and the change in x. So this would might be my x value and then from there to there that would be delta x. Or I could have a different secant line from here to here. And again, as long as I knew one x value and the change in x, that would give me the slope. So you can see with a parabola, lots of secant lines, different slopes. But on part B, they're going to ask us to find the slope for when x is equal to 1 and delta x has those different values. All right, so we want the slope. Remember, x is 1, so I'm going to put in 1 for x, and this time delta x is going to be 0 0.5, add 3, do that arithmetic, that's negative 2.5 plus 3, that would be 0.5. Now I want delta x to be 0.1. x is still 1, but delta x is 0.1. What's that slope going to be? going to be 0.9. So a little different. 
What's my next slope? When delta x is 0 0.01. What's that going to be? 0.99. Ah, so what's happening when delta x is getting much smaller? What's that value getting closer to? Well, 0.99. What's that really close to? It's going to be close to the value of 1. So when it asks you what value does the slope approach as delta x approaches 0, we get 1. Think about it. If we go back to our formula here, and delta x was 0, and x is 1, our slope is 1. Part C asks us the equation for the secant line at x is equal to 1 and delta x is 0.01. So we want the equation of the line. I know my slope is 0.99. I know x is 1. So what is my y value? Well, here's a graph. When x is 1, y is 0. But if you're not sure, you could plug in 1 into your function and you would get 0. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus 0 equals 0 0.99 times x minus 1. And there would be the slope of your secant line. So it's a, almost 1. And again, graphically, we'd have here. We'd, and if you had a point right next to it and drew a secant line, the slope is about 0.99. Okay, part D says on your own, find the slope for when delta x is 0.01, but is x equal to 3? Is the slope a reasonable answer according to the graph? So if we look at the graph, 1, 2, 3, you want the slope, what kind of answer should you expect?